yesterday's launch was cancelled at the last minute for technical reasons. Today, there were no hitches. Four, three, two, one. We have booster ignition and liftoff of the Space Shuttle Endeavour. For the space agency, this is a vital mission. The shuttle is carrying a spacecraft called Unity, the first American bit of the new International Space Station. The launch was watched by American Secretary of State Madeleine Albright. Afterwards, she praised the launch controllers. My congratulations to all of you. Stupendous work, and uh, I admire you, and I will have a personal attachment to the whole program from now on. Thank you. Waiting in orbit for the shuttle is the Russian Zarya spacecraft launched last month. On Sunday night, the shuttle's robot arm will latch on to Zarya and attach it to the American bit in the cargo bay. The first two of some 100 bits of the space station will have been fitted together. After today's successful launch, NASA breathed a sigh of relief. So far, so good. We've got effectively a perfect vehicle on orbit and uh, nothing to, uh, to have of concern in executing a perfect mission and a milestone for uh, the space station and the history of uh, human spaceflight. Sixteen nations are involved in building the space station. It's the most complex engineering project ever undertaken. It'll be dangerous work, and it will take five years. James Wilkinson, BBC News. The actor Derek Nimmo is still critically ill in hospital after falling down the stairs at his home on Wednesday evening. He's in intensive care at Atkinson Morley Hospital in South London following an operation to remove a blood clot from his brain. A new invention could put an end to the misery of finding that clothes supposed to be your size just don't fit once you get into the changing room. The new body scanner will allow you to see how you look in clothes without trying them on. It might look like a shower cubicle, but one trip inside this futuristic changing room could alter the way we buy clothes forever. For those of us who can't seem to buy outfits that fit perfectly, this might be the answer. A computer which can measure the human body within a few millimetres. It's a little bit like a photo booth. You stand in it and eight cameras scan the outside of your body in 3D. And uh, then you get this sort of 3D image that's placed in the computer. After that, we then have to uh, look for what we call landmarks, like the, uh, uh, the navel, uh, maybe the nose. And from that, we can then work out from that body scan your actual measurements. In future, it's hoped that customers will receive smart cards containing their unique body data, which they'll be able to swipe through scanners inside shops. The customer will be able to select, with greater confidence, garments that fit them. They will also be less inconvenience from that of needing to take garments back that don't. The plan is to install scanners in shops across the country and conduct the first national sizing survey of 30,000 people. Inventors believe virtual shopping, where customers will use their smart cards to see how they look in clothes on a computer screen, is just around the corner. But if you don't trust computers to get it right, then you're better off sticking to the usual Saturday afternoon trudge in and out of the dressing rooms. Denise Mahoney, BBC News. Now, it's well known that people, whatever shape they are, like to be spoken to in their own language. And the same is true, it seems, for animals. A West Country farmer who bought a herd of cattle from France found that when he addressed them in English, they did the bovine equivalent of shrugging and looking away. Now, action's been taken to break down the language barrier. Come on, come on, come on in, come on in. Come the on, new herd at Lordswood Dairy in, in Somerset was come being, on, well, come awkward on, to say on. the least. Come on, come on in, come on. Try as he might on, to get them in for milking, farmhand on, Jim Patton on, just couldn't on, make them budge. On, and then a thought on, occurred to him. Viens vite, viens vite. This was clearly viens a vite, cultural problem. Vite. The Montbelliard cows had just been imported from France. They weren't allez, understanding allez. our language. Viens vite, ah. viens vite. Or Jim's attempts to speak theirs. Oh. Allez, allez, viens là, viens. Allez, gosse, viens. And so enter the solution in the form of Olivier Bellot, recruited from France to restore communication. And, et voila, suddenly there's a new feeling of entente cordiale down on the farm. And experts in animal behaviour are watching it all with great interest. Well, it's all quite fascinating, really. Um, clearly, language is important. Um, I think it's not necessarily the words, more the, the intonation, the delivery, and also the body language that goes with it. And if statistics prove contentment, the fact is the cows are now producing more milk. 
the telepathy between the man and the cow is very, very important. They, they've always grown up to know French, and why shouldn't they uh, understand one language at the moment? But he's teaching them English now. Hi, Jim. You say Ali. Ali. Learning a new language is always a bit of a problem, and it seems right now the French cows are struggling with their English. It may yet prove a little simpler to teach the English herdsmen a little French. Clinton Rogers, BBC News in Somerset. No, it's not a